Good evening and thank you for joining me in this celebration of Latin American piano music. You could see in the program the first and the last piece I are by Astor Piazzolla. The reason is because 2021 is the 100th anniversary of Piazzolla's birthday. The first piece I'm going to perform is Adios Nonino. The version you are going to hear tonight is a solo version, a transcription from the quintet by Brazilian composer Laercio de Freitas. Starts with a big long introduction, which is a, a, a cadenza that was improvised by Piazzolla's pianists. And after that, you will hear the tango rhythm and, of course, the main theme and other themes that come um, to complete this tango.
The next two pieces I'm going to play I, are by Mexican composer Manuel Maria Ponce. Uh, he lived between the late Romanticism and early 20th century, and like many composers of that time, he studied in Europe. So his music reflects very much that European tradition of mostly salon music. Although later Ponce incorporated uh, Mexican elements in his music. So the first um, piece I'm going to play is called Preludio Mexicano, Cuiden Su Vida. Mexican prelude, take care of yourself or take care of your life. Uh, this was a song that he composed and later on he arranged it for solo piano. The second piece is perhaps one of his most famous pieces is the intermezzo for solo piano.
The next set of pieces I'm going to play are three tangos by Juan José Castro. He composed tangos in 1942, and there are five pieces. The first movement is named Evocación or Evocation, and then is preceded by four different tangos in which Castro's uh, portrays a male character of the Argentine tango. Evocación or evocation he uses in a very impressionistic way. He evokes the famous tango La Cumparcita. The first tango is called Llorón or Huiner. In this tango, uh, Castro portrays a male who complains, who cries, who whines about everything in life. Uh, you will hear that there is a very whiny melody and all of a sudden is an outburst of crying and uh, tears. Uh, the last tango is called Nostalgico, Nostalgic. Uh, Castro's quote the Argentine tango 9 de Julio. 9 de Julio, July 9th, is the independence of Argentina. At the end of this tango, and at the end of the whole set, uh, he uses the keyboard in a way that he that uh, resembles uh, the bandoneon, which is one of the typical instruments of tango music. So this is Tangos by Juan José Castro.
next two pieces I'm going to perform are by Brazilian composer Heitor Villalobos. Villalobos was a very prolific composer and he composed a monumental work called the Bachianas Brasileiras, which is a homage to Bach. Um, in these works, we have nine monumental works, some of them for solo orchestra, Perhaps the most uh, famous one is the one for cello and so cellos and soprano, um, but also there is one that is for solo piano, and that's uh, Bachianas Brasileiras number four. Within that, there are four movements. So I'm going to perform for you today the first and the third movement. The first movement is a prelude in which you can hear some of the Bach influence, especially in the use of the circle of fifths. And um, on the third one, which is an aria, uh, Villa Lobos uses a very um, uh, famous uh, folk uh, traditional Brazilian tune that you know was later uh, sung by the most popular Brazilian uh, singers. But in the middle section, he transformed that uh, tune into a very rhythmic. Uh, type of improvisation, very powerful, and that resembles really uh, the, the Brazilian batucadas when Brazilians go out to the streets with drums and start improvising with rhythms. So this is Villa Lobos Bajianas Brasileiras number four, first movement, prelude, third movement, aria. Thank you. 
The next couple of pieces I would like to play are from Carlos Guastavino's Sonata in C sharp minor. This is a monumental sonata with four movements, ending with a huge fugue as the last movement. Uh, Guastavino was called the Schubert of the Pampas because he never abandoned a very traditional uh, tonal harmony and very gorgeous melodies. Uh, while many of his contemporaries were uh, incorporating some of the latest European compositional styles such as 12 tone, um, uh, atonality, serialism, even electronic music, um, Guastavino always kept a very traditional way of writing. Um, the, the, sonat, uh, the, the movements I'm going to play are the first movement and the second movement. In the first movement, you can hear that Schubertian type of melodies, gorgeous melodies and gorgeous harmonies. Now, in the second movement, it's very interesting because although he doesn't call it, it's a malambo, which is, which is an Argentinian dance. And you will hear later on a malambo by Ginastera in this program. Uh, the interesting thing about uh, Guastavino's malambo is that he used a 3-4 time signature but he writes in quintuplets, uh, which creates uh, asymmetrical type of rhythms and meter that we don't have in Argentinian music. So this is a very interesting malambo.
As I promised when I played the Guastavino Sonata, which you're going to hear now is Ginastera's Malambo. Um, the Malambo is a male acrobatic dance. It's only danced by men in Argentina. And it's an opportunity for the gaucho or the cowboy to show his acrobatic dancing skills. Um, it has a, a ostinato, a pattern, that it gets more uh, complicated and more um, uh, intense, showing how the gaucho actually each time uh, comes back, they need to do more and more and more and more in their dance. Uh, the version I'm playing tonight is the first edition, which has an introduction that reassembles the um, guitar tuning. Uh, Hinastera later on took out that introduction and appears on the second and further editions without this introduction. I was lucky enough to locate a score that has the introduction and this is the edition that you're, this is the version that you're going to hear tonight.
The last piece I would like to play tonight is Astor Piazzolla's La Muerte del Ángel, The Death of the Angel. Piazzolla was asked to compose this piece for a play. In that play, an angel comes to the poorest neighborhood in Buenos Aires to save the people's life. In the process, he gets into a fight and he gets killed. The music very much reflects that fight. Uh, starts with a very rhythmic pattern, following a very slow section and melodic section, and that's when the angel is talking to the people, trying to change them. The fights reassume, the angel gets involved in the fight and gets killed. At the very end, you will hear very, very loud chords and almost the, the, the tempo slows down considerably, and that's when the angel is gasping for air and then he falls down on the ground, dead. This is an arrangement I made of the solo piano version and versions like quintet and trio that I play through my life. So this is Piazzolla's La Muerte del Ángel. I hope you enjoyed tonight's program and thank you so much for joining me. Bye.